Daryl Edward Brooks Jr. was born February 2nd, 1982 to parents Daryl Brooks Sr. and Don Woods. Growing up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Daryl Brooks Jr. was raised with his siblings by his mother for the majority of his childhood. Daryl would later state that his memories of his father included him being an abusive alcoholic. At the age of 11, Daryl's grandmother died, which sent him into a manic episode. Soon after this, he was sent to the hospital where he was diagnosed as having bipolar disorder. Following this, he would attempt to take his own life many times. Starting in 1999, at the age of 17, Daryl Brooks would begin his life as a career criminal. On September 5th of that year, he would be charged with carrying a concealed weapon as well as aggravated battery. From this point on, he would be arrested many times, from possession of cocaine to attempted strangulation. Years later, he would even impregnate a 15-year-old girl. Along with being a criminal, Daryl would also attempt to be a rapper by the name of Math Boy Fly. In a chilling turn of events, Daryl, or in this case, Math Boy Fly, would shoot a music video. In the video, the SUV he would use to commit mass murder can be seen in the background. Furthermore, Daryl's music would include lyrics such as, They gonna need a cleaner for the shit we did, All my killers, Gacy, where them bodies hid. On November 12th, 2021, Daryl Brooks would go to an American Inn in Milwaukee. It was there that he tried to enter the room of his girlfriend, banging on her door and screaming at her. Once she opened the door, she attempted to walk past him. However, Daryl grabbed her phone, got in his car, and sped off. Later on, he spotted her walking by a gas station. Pulling up beside her, Daryl then demanded she enter his vehicle. When she refused, he punched her in the face before running her over with his car. She would be left with bruises, blood on her face, as well as a swelled lip. From here, the woman was hospitalized and Daryl Brooks was charged with two felonies, his mother later posting a $1,000 bail to which Daryl was released on November 16th. It was later discovered that before this incident, Daryl would regularly abuse the woman, going so far as to beat her for not paying his bail for other crimes he committed. On November 21st, 2021, police received a call about a knife fight between Daryl and his ex-girlfriend. Once police arrived on the scene, Daryl fled in his SUV, heading toward downtown. At this time, the city was having their annual Christmas parade. Streets had been closed off and the roads were filled with marching bands as well as hundreds of bystanders. According to official court documents, a policeman by the name of Officer Butrin witnessed Daryl drive into the parade. Initially, Officer Butrin suspected that he was lost, anticipating that he would soon turn around and leave. However, Daryl continued driving even as Officer Butrin put his hand up yelling stop multiple times. The officer would later state that at this point, the SUV was going approximately 25 miles per hour. Even then, the policeman still believed that Daryl was lost. This soon changed when the SUV accelerated, nearly hitting a small child near a parking stall. At a nearby intersection, Daryl activated his brakes. To everyone's horror, he then began to rapidly accelerate. With his tires squealing, he made a left turn, ramming through a crowd of pedestrians. Bodies flew through the air and dropped to the ground as he continued. According to court documents, it was clear to Officer Butrin this was an intentional act to strike and hurt as many people as possible. The officer ran after the SUV, witnessing it plow through objects and dozens of people. At this time, he would encounter multiple casualties. With dozens of bodies on the ground, many began to pull at him, requesting assistance. He reassured them that ambulances were coming and then continued his pursuit on foot of the SUV. Other witnesses would later state that Daryl had been driving in a zigzag pattern, trying to kill as many people as possible. Another officer would shoot at the SUV three times, successfully striking it with each shot. One witness would later state 
As I continued to watch the SUV, it continued to drive in a zigzag motion. It was like the SUV was trying to avoid vehicles, not people. There was no attempt made by the vehicle to stop, much less slow down. Within the span of a few minutes, Daryl Brooks had left a trail of blood, broken bones, and misery. He had run over over 60 people, the majority of whom would be left with severe injuries. Along with this, five individuals would be left dead from the attack. Two days later, eight-year-old Jackson Sparks would die due to blunt force trauma to his head, totaling the death count to six. Another victim of his would be found to have a fractured pelvis during her autopsy. According to statements from one of the officers, Daryl had no emotion on his face while running over his victims. Following his rampage, Daryl soon fled the scene, ditching his SUV in a random driveway so he would not be recognized. He ran through a residential neighborhood, went to a house, and knocked on the door. Once the homeowner answered, Daryl would claim that he was homeless and needed to use a phone. The homeowner, not knowing what had happened, invited him inside and offered him a sandwich but quickly ordered him to leave once police arrived. At this point, Daryl would be arrested and charged for murder. Following this, he would be held at a $5 million bail. A GoFundMe would be set up by a friend, but would soon be taken down due to violating the site's terms of service. The description of the fundraiser would read, As someone who knows Daryl personally, I can tell you that he would never do such a thing, and I know he is innocent of what he is charged with. I am seeking to raise the bail so Daryl can be released and speak his truth to his side of the story in this tragic situation that sees another black man behind bars in a purely political and racist trial. There is no excuse for this continued treatment of black Americans by prosecutors around the country. We ask that he be treated equally as anyone else in this country would be treated and he should be released until found guilty. During his trial, lawyers would initially claim that Brooks did not intend to kill anyone since he was unable to look at pictures of his victims. This is despite the fact that he continued driving after first hitting people. Shortly after this, Daryl would fire his lawyers and represent himself. From here on out, he would do nothing but showcase his narcissism. During trial, Daryl would declare himself a sovereign citizen, claiming the court system did not have jurisdiction over him. He would also show no remorse during trial, truly believing that he was the victim. In true narcissistic fashion, he would argue with the judge at inappropriate times and even stare her down with a murderous rage in his eyes. I myself know a few people with personality disorders. People like this believe they are smarter than everyone around them. When they can't get their way or can't come up with a counter-argument, they begin talking over their opponent in an attempt to silence them. Daryl Brooks most likely truly believed that these tactics would give him a leg to stand on in court, getting him off scot-free. Unfortunately for him, his childish behavior got him nowhere. The judge would later state, you have absolutely no remorse for anything that you do. You have no empathy for anyone. Frankly, Mr. Brooks, no one is safe from you. Going on, she would say, there are many times, many times good people do bad things, but there are times when evil people do bad things. There is no medication or treatment for a heart that is bent on evil. Daryl Edward Brooks would receive six consecutive life sentences plus an additional 700 years in prison. With that being said, he states that he intends to appeal his conviction. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. If you did, consider subscribing and checking out my other true crime content. Videos on this channel are uploaded weekly. That's all I have for now. See you next time.